ready to do this? No. Yes. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means it's vlog day, and we're here in the vape lair, uh, starting right off the, the top of the program with a... Uh... <laughs> it's like I was doing a thing. Watch the screen. Oh, I thought you were handing me the dog. <laughs> no, watch. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Look at the dog coming in. Instead of Jam Attack, this segment's going to be called Gypsy Attack. Gypsy Attack. <laughs> Starting off the top of the uh, program with a Jam Attack here. Jam's hanging out with me. How are you doing tonight, my darling love? Really good, thanks. <laughs> really good, thanks. So, uh, we grew our lawn back, and I mowed it... Um, for the first time today, uh, actual actual grass. It wasn't like yellow death grass. It was actual grass. And then we had, what do you call it, Jam? A cookout? We had a cookout. Southern people call it a cookout. Uh, everybody else calls it a barbecue. But we cooked up some steaks on the grill. Never again. And uh, Jam's not a fan of the steak. About ripped my teeth out. About ripped her teeth out. That's how you know it's a good steak, honey. It's supposed to rip your teeth out. It's supposed to be like eating a shoe. Yeah. Hurts me. Hurts you. Hurts you. So, yeah, that's what we did today. We relaxed a little bit. I did run a bunch of errands. Um, the giveaways from last week, uh, the last vlog, um, have been mailed out as of today, <laughs> as of today, which is Monday, which is not Thursday. It's not actually Thursday. It's Monday the 12th. So they'll, they'll be there within the next couple of days. They all got shipped priority. You know, I figured why not? I'll spring for the extra money so that they get there on time. Actually, that was my only option was priority. So you got priority whether you wanted it or not. Uh, but it's great. So yeah, your, your, your prizes should be there soon. And, uh, Hope you hope the winners enjoy them. Like I said before, I will be having another contest, probably on Facebook. Um, <coughs> pardon me, burp life. Um, I have a great picture of Matt. Like I said, he's dying to see it. It's it's just a picture of Matt uh, from Suck My Mod. That's that's kind of funny that I want to do a caption contest for. But we'll have another activism related giveaway as well. We'll have we'll try to think of something activism related. <laughs> The cat just came in and just laid down on the ground because she's a lazy tub of crap. She really is. She is, but pick it's her okay. Up and show how fat she is. I can't. There's no way I'm gonna pick that cat up. Pick her up and show. Her. She will freak out, Jam. No, she won't. Okay. Well, I don't like to have dead air, so you need to talk while this is happening. Hey, everybody! <laughs> show her how fat she is. <laughs> Here's a size comparison. Look, it's a cat. She's trying to get away. She's trying to get away. Okay, okay. Okay, you're okay. You're just you're so okay. fat. Okay. She's like 25 pounds. So the cat actually made it onto uh, onto the video, which is... Gypsy attack. Gypsy attack. <laughs> gypsy, gypsy, and gypsy thinks she is best friends with the cat. And the cat couldn't care uh, less about, uh, about our chihuahua. She just plays and plays and Tux just lays there and goes, what are you doing? Why are you bouncing around so much, you little tiny hair dog? Do you see a little tail flick in the background? Hello. What are you talking about? I was watching her little tail flick. No, she's over there. She's off camera. So yeah, we got another vlog to get into. So, uh... I'm always changing things. Amber knows I'm always changing things. And I just want to start things off with an announcement to make. What I'm going to do, uh, I wasn't really super excited about the what the vlog had kind of been turning into. It kind of got taken over by reviews. And then I got the bright idea, oh, well, I can still include these reviews. I'll just edit them out and upload them as their own videos. And then I realized that's basically just a Sunday double feature and then the vlog. I would basically be going back to my old, old, uh, you know, old routine. So what I'm going to do, because I'm just a complicated guy and I like to change things uh, nonstop all the time, is I'm still going to have the vlog. The vlog is a staple. The vlog is staying. It's staying here on SoundCloud. It's staying here on YouTube because I absolutely love, 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 love doing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a separate 
review video once a week um, that's going to get uploaded probably the same day, maybe the day before, but probably the same day as the vlog. So it's going to be a vlog in one day, and then that same day I'm going to have a review video, just an old school, straight up jazz intro, Grim Green style uh, review video. And I think that'll free up the vlog to talk about some more different stuff instead of having it be overwhelmed by reviewingness uh, throughout the whole middle of it. Um, so we can get back to kind of the kind of the roots of the vlog of what I wanted it to be, rather than just being taken over by uh, by reviews. But you know what I mean. You got to experiment. You don't know if something works until you try it. And so I tried it, and now I'm uh, adjusting uh, as necessary. Jam, what? How do you feel about this? I think it just takes time away from your family. <laughs> she says, "I think it just takes time away from your family." And she looked so sad when she said that. But we had a cookout tonight. We spent, we spent most of the day together. I got to run errands. I came home. We had a cookout for hours. We mowed the front and backyard. We did lawn. We did yard work all day. sunburned. Jam got sunburned. And she says, what did you say? You're like, I was only outside for a few minutes. For five minutes. Five minutes. And then, uh, no, she came back in and she was sunburned. Her shoulders were sunburned. Her face is sunburned. And if, you know, she's a ginger, so... Um, if they drag their soulless bodies out into the sun for more than five minutes, just burn. But, just burnt. But look, my sunscreen works. Yes, and she, it's funny because she's burnt everywhere except her tattoos because she put her tattoo sunscreen from the solution on her tattoos, and that didn't get burned, but uh, her shoulders. I'm holding a dog. Her shoulders did. I'm going to hand this back to you. Chicken. So yeah, so that's uh, so that's where I stand right now. I have got a whole long list of uh, of vlog notes and stuff. We have beer, music, some shout outs. Uh, we're gonna talk about FDA and CASA as uh, as like I said, will be included in every vlog from now until 2016 and probably after that as well. Um, got a few helpful links, and we're also gonna talk about the. Uh, the EU legislation that's happening as well. So I got a full plate, honey. Do you want to skip out now? Gypsy attack. It's a good one. Good, good on you, Gypsy. Good on you. It looks like she's my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Just and now we have Gypsy with the news. Gypsy. Well, thank you, Nick. <laughs> Why does Gypsy sound like Elvis? That made no sense. I sound like Elvis? Yeah, you're like, well, thank you, Nick Green. <laughs> I don't ever say your name. Thank you very much. So thank you. Everybody thinks they can do an Elvis impression, but the reality is that nobody can do an Elvis impression. Uh, and that's just the way the world me works. On the Instagram. Why do you keep why do you keep pimping your Instagram? <laughs> I think everybody who's gonna follow you has followed you already. A Green. Johnson. Yes, it's at a Green Johnson. Listen. <laughs> Listen. I post the funniest stuff of Nick on there. You're really missing out if you don't follow me. Yeah, they missed out. <coughs> Pardon me. They missed out on the uh, on the straw today. I uh, blew vapor through a through a drinking straw, and I was all fascinated by it and giggly. And, and it that was ridiculous dumb. face you had on. I mean, that was just your face, but... <laughs> the face what ridiculous face that I have on? The one that... Where I was like... Yeah, cookout face. Cookout face. That's just the cookout face. We should name a juice cookout face. No, chicken, come back. Okay. Do the only wanna... reason chicken's in here is because um, I left my watermelon on the table. Our dog has a name, and it's not chicken. It is gypsy. <laughs> But lately, all you've been doing is calling the dog chicken. She looks like a daggone chicken. She looks like a chicken. Just like she you look like a duck. Look like a chicken. Is and I don't duck? look like a duck. I don't know where this is coming from. Yes, you do. You walk like a duck. You got a face like a duck. Your nose is kind of like a duck beak. <laughs> you stink like a duck. Have you ever smelled a duck? I smell Ducks you. are the stinkiest animals of all time. Over at Holiday's house, his family has a farm and. Uh, 
I was walking back to my car late one night and there was no lights and I'm like, ah, oh, what is the what is this horrible smell? I parked right next to the goddamn ducks and they <laughs> smell like death. They just smell awful. They smell like poo mixed with burnt dog hair. It's that's exactly what they smell like and it's awful. It's just an awful experience. Okay, we've had enough of gypsy <laughs> dancing time, honey. I need to uh I need to move forward with the show so that uh, everybody who's watched the first 10 minutes doesn't turn this program off because there is a lot of good stuff coming up. My jam tag is the best part of this show. Don't you forget it. Yeah, but we don't have anything to talk about. All we did was do yard work today. Um, We did yard work. We had watermelon. We had watermelon. I bought stuff to do the deck. To do the deck, that's right. I swept. You bought a weed whacker? I bought a weed whacker. So we can whack some weeds? Yeah. Yeah, should be fun times. I, and you know what? What? I always called them a weed eater. But they're really called weed whackers. Yeah, they don't eat any weeds. Weed they just eaters. They just whack them. Hey, I wonder if I could just whack down them bushes. No, I told you about the bushes, honey. We're going to have to have a pro come in and tear those out. I hate those stupid bushes. Sorry. I wonder if I could demo them. No, you can't demo them. You can't remove bushes with a sledgehammer, honey. I bet I could. I bet you could try, and you'll probably hurt yourself and ruin the house in the process. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> There's going to be a hole in the garage now from Amber trying to demo the... Uh, the bushes from our front walkway. We should talk about how I should want to get a Vespa. Jam wants to get a Vespa for some reason, even though we live nowhere that a Vespa would be useful. We live in rural Dayton, Nevada, where there's nothing. There's a grocery store and a Taco Bell down the street, and that's it. If you want to go anywhere else, even if you want to go to a Walmart for some reason, you have to drive 30 minutes to get there. Do not. Yes, you do. Minutes. Ten minutes from here to Walmart. Yeah. You're out of your mind. That's you are you out of your me. mind. It's not ten minutes, and on a Vespa with a top speed of 35 miles an hour, it would take you an hour and a half to get there. That, I'm not gonna take my Vespa to Walmart. We're, haven't, we haven't shopped at Walmart in a year. I know. I'm just saying that the closest thing to us is the Walmart, and it's still a half hour away. Screw that. So you're not going to get much use out of your Vespa, honey. Well, I'll see ya. I'm done. Well, thanks for stopping by. As always, it's been a pleasure. Take the animal with you. What do you think, Chips? You want to come? Chicken head? Chicken head. Are animals going to get renamed to be chicken? No. Chipsy, don't pee in here. Say goodbye. Let Say goodbye. Let nose, Dad. She doesn't want to lick my nose. Oh, no? Okay. Here you go. See your mom. Come on, chicken. Ugh. All right. So, uh, moving forward in the program, I do have some shout-outs to do. And I'm not going to try. I'm trying not to make a habit of doing the shout-outs. But a shout-outs, uh, it's a thing that kind of happens sometimes. People tug at my heartstrings, and I, I wish to give them shout-outs. So uh, first up is Adam. Uh, he sent me a message that says, Hey, I was wondering if you could give a quick shout-out to my group on Facebook. We're trying to spread the word on vaping here in the state of Washington and the Pacific Northwest. The group's name is Vaping Awareness and Information. Any help that you can provide is very appreciated. There you go. Consider that your shout-out, Adam. Uh, it is a group that I'll link to in the description uh, designed to target uh, the Washington Pacific Northwest area. It's called Vaping Awareness and Information. If you're in that area, absolutely get plugged in. I think getting plugged in with a social group is one of the best things you can do. We have our own uh, Northern Nevada Vapors group here in Northern Nevada, shockingly enough, started to uh, Started by my uh, by my good friend John Denver. Um, we call him Sven, or at least I call him Sven. Um, John Denver started the uh, the uh, Northern Nevada uh, Vapors, and uh, Adam has started the Pacific Northwest uh, Vapors Vaping Awareness and Information. So that is your shout out. I also have a shout out to a gentleman named Damien, whose wife emailed me. Um, and she says, hey, Nick, 
My husband Damien is a big fan of yours and he loves everything you do. Uh, we're from the UK and he is in the process of opening up his own vape shop and selling what he loves. He is very passionate about everything to do with vaping, Is uh, if that's the term that's used. Evidently uh, his wife is not, uh, not a vapor, which is fine. Um, would you have any advice for him or could you give him a shout out in one of your vlogs? He watches them all. His name is Damien Fletcher. Many thanks. Damien Fletcher. How are you, sir? How are you doing? How's things over in the UK? Do you hang out with Scott all the time? Because that's that's what I would do. Um, congratulations on opening up your own shop. Um, I don't I don't own a shop. I don't own a storefront. Um, but if I had advice to give you, it would be listen to your customers and have knowledgeable people that work for you. One of the overwhelming things that I see on forums and Reddit and Facebook and everywhere and people that private message me and email me is that they talk to brick and mortar store employees who have no idea what they're talking about, who will just sell them a mech mod, a battery, and build them like a .2 ohm coil and send them on their way without educating them at all. And that's one thing that I would like to see change in the vape world is to have knowledgeable, knowledgeable people behind the counter. You know, it doesn't take a lot, but it does take some research. There's training periods. Just for the normal job that I have with Starbucks, there's nine months of training. Nine months of training to learn how to roast coffee. So there should at least be three months of training to, uh, to be able to speak about vaping gear, about vaping equipment. That's what I would suggest. Um, clearly, you're passionate about it, at least according to your wife, and you can be that knowledgeable person, but you need to, to spread that knowledge around uh, to, your, to your employees at the shop. But good luck. Best of luck with your shop. I think that's fantastic. Um, even in the face of adversity, still opening a shop, I think that speaks a uh, I think that speaks volumes. Um, so here's to you. Uh, last but not least, the shout out uh, goes to Ryan. He's organizing a New Mexico vape meet, and it's called. Uh, it was once called the uh, New Mexico Vape Fest. He has changed the name, uh, thankfully, to the New Mexico Vape Fiesta. And man, that just sounds. That just sounds fun. Uh, it's coming up soon. It's May 30th. Uh, no, May 30th? <sighs> pardon me. Pardon my whistling. It looks like it's going to be May 30th uh, at the Amped Performance Center in Albuquerque, New Mexico, 415 Central Northwest, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, I'll post a link to their Facebook group in the description. If you're in the Arizona, New Mexico, hell, if you're in Vegas, if you're in that area, if you're in Southern California, why not just shoot over to New Mexico for the New Mexico Vape Fiesta? Uh, to me, that sounds like uh, a vape fiesta is something that I would uh, that I would want to go to. So I'll have a link to that in the description. Thank you, Ryan, for sending that my way. We've already talked about the changes that are coming. I'm going to continue on with the vlog. Oh, come on. Why did that happen? I'm going to continue on with the vlog because I love the vlog. I love the vlog. I love talking. It's just kind of a thing that I do and that I love. And apart from the vlog, I'm going to have reviews outside of the vlog again. I tried encompassing it all into one big long video, but I didn't kind of like the way that went. I didn't like the way it felt. Um, so right now we're going to have a trial period where we're going to have a single review outside of the vlog and then the vlog. Uh, and this will all be going up on like a, a Thursday, which uh, which just makes my life that much, uh, that much better. Um, Let's talk about some beer and music because that sounds uh that sounds awesome to me. So we're here with the beer and the music and the beer and the music. So what beer do I have tonight? And I wish I was as uh resourceful as uh, as 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 Miss Ruby Roo, but I don't do any sort of pairings or anything like that. Uh, I just vape things and then I drink things and I don't think about like oh the Belgian style Abbey that I'm drinking is compliments this kiwi apple very very nicely and then I take a drink and then I vape and that doesn't happen um, 
with me, not here at the at the Grim Green World. If you want that, you should be watching Ruby Roos videos. And even if you don't want that, you should still be watching uh, Ruby Roos videos. But the beer I have tonight is uh, called Brother Thelonious. Uh, it's a Belgian-style abbey. Uh, comes from the North Coast Brewing Company. And I picked it up at uh, at Rayleigh's at my local grocery store. Uh, it wasn't too expensive. I think it was only 13 bucks for the bottle, which is, you know, uh, beer budget hands, right? Beer budget hands. But this comes from North Coast Brewing Company. It's available uh, year-round. I'm just looking at the statistics here on beeradvocate.com. Uh, it scored an 85, which to me, I mean, that's, uh, pardon me, Robin, what is that? That's a Belgian style Abbey, uh, 9.4% alcohol by volume. And uh, I think it's great. I get that nice uh, Belgian style citrusy sweetness. This one seems a lot sweeter for the, how dark it is. Seems a lot sweeter um, than a lot of other Belgian style Abbeys where the, the ABT 12 has a bit of a savory note to it. This Brother Thelonious is straight up just Belgian Abbey sweetness. Um, Really like it. Uh, I think it's a great uh, kind of mid-year beer as we're transitioning into summer. I tend to drink a little bit lighter be beers in the summer, but during this, like it's cold at night but warm during the day transitions, I do I do still like a darker beer, and this is kind of a, a, a nice middle ground for me. So here's to you, Brother Thelonious. Of course, I'll have a link in the description to where you can check this fine brew out. Everybody seems to be really liking the... Uh, St. Bernardus, ABT12. I see people posting on Instagram and Facebook constantly. They said, oh, thanks a lot. Now I had to check this out. It's really good. You will not be disappointed. If you're a beer person, except for my buddy Brandon, who we call Meat, he uh, doesn't seem to like it, but I'm convinced he's he's crazy. So check out the St. Bernardus. Uh, feel free to check out the Brother Thelonious. I have been enjoying it this much, and I hope to enjoy it this much by the end of the vlog. Oh, mm hmm. Very nice. It's rich. It's rich with Belgian sweetness. Uh, so, what's next up uh, is some music. So, who sent this to me? William sent me this band from Finland. Um, and they are called, I can't even pronounce their name Moors Principitum Est. It's crazy. That is a weird name to have for your band. But they kind of have this, like, in flamesy melodic death metal sound, which, if done right, I really, really like. Um, I don't really like, like, the Dark Tranquility or some of the other melodic death metal that's out there. But this, I've really been enjoying this one song, Two Steps Away. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of in flamesy, like I was saying. It's got, like, that melodic death metal vibe which from you know over there in in europe in uh you know uh sweden and finland and they they seem to like that melodic death metal and it they do it well and this is another good example of that i feel it's pretty rocking he screams a lot and then they sing Anyway, that's Moore's Principium Est. <laughs> I'll have a link to them in the description to this video. You don't even need to worry about it. And then the guy last week, Frederico, who had sent me that crazy Japanese band. Um, a lot of people have been sending me this, and I've been reluctant to put it on here because it's so ridiculous. But I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry, Mark. I drank the Kool-Aid, and I now uh, I'm now enjoying some baby metal. Frederico sent this to me most recently, and it's hard to explain baby metal. It's basically uh, J-pop. It's like these three teenage girls who are Japanese, and. Uh, they sing in front of like this metal band. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Do you hear this?
It's so silly. It's the weirdest shit I've ever heard in my life. But it's so stupidly catchy. And uh, you're like, I, I just want to rock some baby metal right now. Like, I would rock a baby metal t-shirt without even thinking twice. I'd be like, oh, there's an extra large baby metal t-shirt. I'm going to buy that and wear it. Um, it's weird. I mean, no, it's weird. I know it's weird, and I know I shouldn't be digging it, but whatever. It's baby metal. You just accept it, and you move forward with your life. But yeah, it's these, like... Three Japanese teenagers, girls, and they sing, and they sing backed by a metal band. Makes no sense. Makes no sense, but it's a thing that exists. So thank you, uh, Frederico, for sending me that baby metal reminding me again for the last time. Yes, we're finally going to put baby metal in the vlog. Last but not least, uh, fella named Bill. Fella named Bill? Fella named Bill sent me this other band named Fuzz. And they have this very, like, fuzzy... And the name fits them perfectly. They have this, like, fuzzy, Black Sabbath-y, like, very retro sound to them. It's fuzzy guitars and poor production and melodies that just catch you. And uh, my good buddy Mark Moots, who I talk about all the time, he's the one who kind of brought me into this whole, like, stoner rock world, which he's not even really super stoked on anymore, which I can absolutely understand because it gets a little boring and it gets a little samey sometimes. But before I had really became friends with Mark, I was never really hip to, like, the stoner rock stuff. Things like, you know... Goat Snake or Gonga or uh, you know Fu Manchu or all these stoner rock bands and then I got into it a lot and I still really really like some really good stoner rock and that seems to be what this is Fuzz they're impossible to google even if you google Fuzz band you won't you won't find them so thankfully thanks to Bill we have this link that we can uh, that we can enjoy and listen to, and uh, it's like this other band that Mark had shown me called Family. They named themselves Family, which is impossible to search for. You will never find because even if you search for Family Band, you know how many bands out there are made up of made up of a family. It's impossible to search for a band named Family. But luckily, you know, after uh, many many hours of Google foo, I did find them. So. Well, we've given some shout-outs. We talked to Amber a bit. We talked about beer and music. Uh, I would like to do some... I, I guess they're reviews, but they're really more f impressions. I don't know. Let's just call it first impressions. So, first things up. Um, I Obviously, I'm not going to do a full review for this because it's a little silly, but uh, a great company... Um, called RJ Vapes, and I guess I can link to their Instagram, um, because that's how I started following them, was on Instagram, and I don't even remember why or how I started following them, um, but they sent me along this new K-Fun top cap, which, if you're seeing it, I have a great picture on my Instagram of it, let's see if you can see this, can you see this different styled uh, top cap right there with the slices in it, and it's it's round and flat on top? They sent that to me, and it totally changes the way the K-Fun looks, and it kind of makes me... I mean, I love the K-Fun. It's the only tank, in my opinion, that's, that's worth anything anymore. But this makes the K-Fun a little bit cooler, you know what I mean? A little bit more fun to use. I like the idea of modifying the K-Fun. Uh, there's another company called Science of Vaping that I've been trying to get a hold of about buying. They sell quartz... Uh, they call them quartz tanks, but they're just... I believe they're Pyrex tanks that take up the full length of the K-Fun. So you have a full clear tank and then uh, a different, differently styled top cap on top. I think that just looks cool as hell. And it's kind of uh, refreshed my K-Fun a little bit, if you will. I've always loved the K. I'm going to continue to use it. I mean, probably till forever. For, till forever. But I really, like, uh, I really like this top cap. I just think it looks cool. And if I could get one of those sweet little nano kits and this top cap, then pff, that, would be, uh, that would be sweet. Allow me to uh, have a, a bit of a vape break here. Mm -hmm. 
It's just a K-Fun. It's great. Uh, I rely so heavily on the K-Fun. It is obscene. I take it. If I leave the house, I'm taking a K-Fun. If I go to a vape meet, I'm taking a K-Fun. If I go to work, I am taking a K-Fun. Anywhere I go, all at the Silver State Tattoo and Arts Festival, whenever I leave town, wherever I go, it's a K-Fun because they're so damn reliable and I like the way they vape. It's fun at home to blow big clouds and rebuild your coils and this, that, and the other, but for sheer just full-on reliability, K-Fun. I mean, it's basically all I want to vape anymore. If I had five of these, it wouldn't be enough. Thank you, RJ Vapes. Thank you, RJ Vapes, for sending that my way. The next thing I have to talk about uh, is a glass top cap, which is somewhere. Holy crap, I think I left it in the living room. I I will be right back, I promise. Intermission. It's intermission. Rise and stretch time. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. Got a yen for hot popcorn? Your favorite soft drinks are sparkling cold. The juicy Frank sizzling hot. There's delicious coffee freshly brewed. And all kinds of ice cream and candy to tempt you. Showtime will be announced loud and clear to get you back. This thing. Uh, I got this from uh, Blake. Met Blake, uh, Blake, I believe it was Blake at Vape Bash. Um, And he handed me off a glass Cardo tank as well as this glass top portion here. And again, I do have a photo uh, on my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. Why not? Why not plug my Instagram right now? Instagram. Uh, Grim Green, that's, I'm, I'm on Instagram, it's Grim Green slash Grim Green. Everything, everything in my life is slash Grim Green now for the rest of my life. But it's Instagram slash Grim Green, and I believe this was designed to fit on the Patriot. No, 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 this was designed to fit on the Chaos, and I thought I tried it on the Chaos and it didn't work. So for the longest time, this was just sitting on my desk and it was tormenting me. I had tried it on every rebuildable atomizer that I had, and I'm like, what does this fit on? What could this possibly fit on? And Google image searches didn't help and Google didn't help and nothing helped until I got this Trident version two rebuildable atomizer and I hate the top cap that comes with the Trident version two. Uh, Hopefully I'll have a review for that soon. But I hate it. I hate the top cap that comes with it. it is stupid It is ridiculous and I hate it. But this this fits on here well nice and snug as I hold my hand underneath it but it is nice and snug I can screw it on I can screw it off huge big dripping hole and I haven't even been rocking this with like an atomizer or I mean with like a uh, with a drip tip because no drip tip I have will fit this all the drip tips I have let me just uh, give you an example this is a dual ring dual o-ring drip tip not even it just sits on top and doesn't even and now it's on the ground it doesn't uh it doesn't snap on top it's basically just a glass top cap for your rebuildable atomizer and it has its own little stem and you're supposed to put a drip tip in there but you know what i've just been tailpiping it i've been just been putting this in my mouth and it's been fantastic. The airflow is gigantic on these. Uh, that looks like three millimeter holes, but it's gigantic. Ridiculous. I mean, that is ridiculous. This is a 0.25 ohm dual coil uh, Sony VTC4 on the inside of the JM mod. This is how I've been using it and it's been it's been just fantastic if you just if all you want is clouds. The flavor is decent, but the clouds, I mean this is really this setup is all about clouds. It's not about flavor. It's not about throat hit. It's not about any of that. It's just about clouds. And the clouds that it produces are quite uh, quite nice and plentiful in size. Redonkulous. That is uh, 
That is straight up redonk. And where did this come from? This didn't just come from a guy named Blake. Blake has a business. At least he works for a business. He might own the business called Clean Tanks. Cleantanks.biz. B-I-Z. Robin, cleantanks.biz. Of course, I'll have a link in the description to where this uh, to where this came from. And there's a couple of different options. There's the atomic one, which I have. There's a Patriot one. There's a Nimbus one. There's a Trident one. There's a Helios one. Uh, I would be interested to try the Nimbus one, honestly, because I love the Nimbus atomizer, but the airflow holes are just a little... Eh, too small for me, so I think a, a Nimbus one would be pretty cool. But regardless, they're about 45 bucks for a if you already have that rebuildable atomizer, but you're not stoked on the airflow, or if you want to refresh it a little bit, or if you want it to look super cool, you can see your coils, you can see your wicks, you can see all your juicy juice in there. Um, I think it's a great uh, it's a great little uh, addition to uh, to a rebuildable atomizer. Um, talked about that. We talked about the new K Fun cap. Um, here's some advice. Uh, we're moving forward now into a completely different subject. Before we get to the CASA stuff, before we get to the AC, a, a, a FDA stuff, what I do want to talk about is commenting on YouTube videos. So here's the thing. I know that these vlogs are long, and people seem to comment as the vlog is happening. So I'll get like five or six comments from the same person, as they're watching the vlog <laughs> and the downside is that part doesn't really bother me I mean I can't reply to all of them but that part doesn't really bother me what's a bummer is that when you comment that many times on a YouTube video it's getting marked as spam because you're commenting so many times so there's a lot of people now who are just right out of the gate marked as spam even if they're leaving one comment they're marked as spam and I try to go through all the spam comments and approve the good ones thankfully YouTube does catch a lot of them like Chinese vendors and uh, you know just straight up like uh, spam email or spam comments from networks and China vendors and stuff like this and people who put their you know their website like oh we have the iClear 30s at our web store come check it out 10% off those get marked as spam but there's a lot of people who are just leaving normal comments who are getting marked as spam and I think it's because at one point during the vlog you may have left uh, you may have left multiple comments on a on a single video so if you would just wait till the end uh, you know and then leave a comment and I notice that the longer my videos are the longer that people leave comments like people are just writing novels now and I'm reading them and I'm like oh okay that's I mean I read every comment that comes across my table I may not be able to reply to them but I definitely read them and now reading them is getting to be this long like novel of things and that's cool you know what I mean if you want to share your story if you want to tell me what you're vaping on if you just want to say hi and tell me about your day then that's cool but uh, I probably won't be able to get to reply to a lot of those but I have noticed that it's this weird thing is the longer my videos are the uh, the longer the comments are the longer the single singular comment is as in addition to the uh, to the multiple comments so if you don't want to get marked as spam by YouTube uh, avoid the uh, the multiple comment syndrome that people have uh, Second to last, I'm going to try to do one, at least one, at least one viewer mail. Um, I posted a video on Monday about the new CASA official call to action regarding the FDA proposals. And uh, basically what they're saying to do is we're not submitting feedback. We're not submitting official feedback just yet. All we're doing is suggesting or, you know... What's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, urging the Food and Drug Administration to extend the feedback uh, period from 75 days. We're asking for 100 more days at least. Um, it makes perfect sense. The FDA had years, three, three four years to craft these, uh, these proposals, and then they're only giving us... Uh, <coughs> They're only giving us 75 days to reply, which uh, is, I mean, I feel that's 
thoroughly, uh, thoroughly unfair. So what I did is I uploaded a quick video just kind of explaining what's going on and my schedule will continuously get interrupted by things like that. So I'm gonna try to stick to this Thursday review vlog thing. But at any time during the week, if something happens regarding the FDA or something happens regarding a CASA communication, I will just sit down, shoot a quick video, and get the word out there that, hey, this, this, and this are happening. I just want, I want people to be armed with as much information as they can. And like I said in that other video, that CASA thing was already posted on Reddit. I, you know, it was already shared on Facebook. So people are taking the initiative and people are sharing these important links. Um, allow me to take a drink. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brother Thelonious, you are treating me well tonight. So yeah, uh, first official call to action. I'll post a link to, uh, not the video, uh, maybe the grimgreen.com, but you know what? Let's just get the official uh, CASA link right now, and I'll put that in the description. That way you don't have to go through grimgreen.com, which is... Uh, which is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, it raises my numbers, but I don't. I don't care. Who cares about numbers? I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to brag about uh, six billion views. Um, yes. So that that is a thing. Because I released their first official call to action regarding the FDA proposals. Please read that very carefully, very very carefully, and follow their instructions and submit feedback accordingly. Also, someone on Facebook, I believe, named Michael, sent me this link to a website called eVoice America, right? Um, it seems pretty cool. I haven't signed up for it yet, but basically, uh, it says on the front page, Ugh. Burp Life. Americans can now easily email opinions to their D.C. elected representatives on critical issues and anonymously vote with every email. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Basically, you go through this website and you find an issue that you're passionate about, and hopefully we can find the FDA issue on there. You write your opinion. You vote, I would vote no on this. I, you know... I feel like you can select, I feel like this is an important issue, I care deeply about this issue, I just wanted to voice my opinion. And you can email your e-votes to Congress. So what you can do is find the issue, find this FDA issue on the website, find your congressmen or your Congress people that are in your state, and you can email them directly through this website. I believe it to be free, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I haven't had the time to really uh, sign up for this and see exactly how it works. Um, I read through the whole front page and basically it's straight up forward just like it says. You use this website to email. They have the database of Congress people and, you know, uh, Washington DC elected representatives and it's basically a way to facilitate uh, organize or you know facilitate contacting them about you know certain issues uh, this that and the other so thank you Michael uh, was your name Michael your what your name was Michael uh, thank you Michael for sending that my way I'll post a link to it in the description uh, maybe we can uh, check this out we can look into it. Uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big website, and uh, I think it could be, uh, I think it could be a really good thing, um, just to, if nothing else, to be able to contact your, uh, to contact your congressmen, your congress people. Uh, I am, like I said, I'm going to try to do at least one viewer mail, but last, but not least, uh, Mark was the most recent person to email this to me. Um, if you're, if you ever go to grimgreen.com, which you know, you, sh you should because I, I put a lot of time and effort into that particular website. But if you don't, that's, I mean, that's fine too. I'm not going to, what am I, the internet police? Uh, I've had a badge. Uh, there's a uh, Namber Juice banner. There's a Casa.org banner. And then there's this I Support the Free Vaping Initiative, European Free Vaping Initiative badge. I've had that there for the last couple, what, 
five months maybe, maybe longer than that. But the EFVI is the European Free Vaping Initiative. And like I said, a lot of people have sent this to me, and I've run across this many times. But most recently, Mark sent it to me. And it's basically one of those, you join up and you can help uh, with the, the European vaping bans um, that are happening. It's, it's not all roses over there uh you know we're dealing with the fda stuff they're dealing with very 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 similar stuff but basically it says what is the efvi the efvi is an opportunity for vapors to directly address the decision makers of europe so they can choose to ignore our option no more we need to collect 1 million signatures before the 25th of november 2014 and reach the minimum quota in seven member states. Not 100% sure what that means, the seven member states things. Uh, EFVI is not another petition to sign. It allows us to participate directly in the development of EU policies regarding electronic cigarettes. Why is, it, why is it important? Once successfully concluded, we will have the opportunity to meet commission representatives in person and present our initiative at the public hearing at European Parliament. So clearly... I mean, obviously, this is a really, really good thing to be in. Like I said, I've been rock rocking the I support the European Free Vaping Initiative badge on GrimGreen.com for quite some time now, but I haven't exactly spoken about it. Um, get on board with this. I mean, if you're, you know, like I said, in the same way that we are dealing with the FDA and the legislation and the proposals coming out, the Europeans, people in the UK, uh, you know, people that we know, like Scott and uh, Todd. Hey guys, Todd here. This affects them the same way that the FDA affects us. So if we can help them, um, you know, or we can spread the word to other European vapors to help the other European vapors, um, I'm sure, I'm sure that they would uh, return the favor and spread the word so that the United States vapors can help other United States vapors. Um, someone had emailed me recently as well regarding if there's anything in Canada that's similar to CASA, that's similar to an advocacy group. I simply do not know. If anybody knows of anything in Canada, that's like an advocacy group or that's similar to CASA or that something is going on in Canada like that, then uh, then please let me know. And absolutely, I would help get the word out. Um, as it stands, I don't, know if, uh, I don't know if anything like that exists. So last, but certainly not least, this is way too long. Let me at least do one viewer mail. Viewer <laughs> mail. All right. Uh, well, this comes from... Uh, See, I'm always fiddling with my chair here because I have this plastic thing down here and my chair wheels get into these ruts and I try to move forward and I can't move forward because my wheels are just in these ruts and so I end up just doing this. Oh, I don't know why I decided to talk about that. Also, I'm going to sneeze. Okay. Timothy writes to me and says, Hi, Nick. I've been watching your videos for around three months now, and I've decided it is time for me to quit smoking. I've been quite a heavy smoker, and I've been buying these standard e-cigarette ones that cost you a little over 20 to 30 pounds. Oh, he's British. I have already gone through four cartomizers costing me 20 pounds. I was wondering the amount that I smoke, would it be worth buying? Uh, an e-cigarette which will last me longer, give me better taste over time. Could you link me to some of which you would recommend me to buy? Thanks a lot. It's greatly appreciated. Keep up the great work. Absolutely. Why would I not do that? Um, there's a couple sites. I believe you to be in the UK. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to do some... Uh, I'm just going to do some uh, Googling here. Oh, you fucking bastards. Let's search for that. There you go. Cloud9vaping.co.uk. I'm going to see what they have on their site. Absolutely. Uh, they support the free uh, European Free Vaping Initiative as well. Absolutely, it's worth it to stop using the disposables. Those never really did any good for anybody except kind of get you interested in, uh, in vaping. Um, they carry a lot. In fact, oh, they carry the Spire. 
They carry the flip too. Wow. Cloud9 vaping basically has most anything you could want. So they carry the Spire, uh, which is only 75 pounds. And you were talking about you had a budget of around 100 to 200 pounds. And, uh, or euros. Euros. Sorry. I don't know my, uh, my conversion. I don't know the, uh, the monetary, you know, what you guys use over there in crazy land. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't have said crazy land. Um, I'm blaming that on the, uh, on the, uh, brother Thelonious here. But yeah, I believe you're on the euro. So you're talking about 100 to 200 euros. They have a mod right off the front here 75 euros you can get the spire which is i did a video for it it's a pretty great variable wattage variable voltage telescoping device um, basically what you're going to gain is more battery life the ability to adjust your wattage and voltage and more durability and the ability to adjust your wattage and voltage you might not think that you need it but there's many many times when you're vaping and you think ah this is just a little bit too weak maybe this clearomizer isn't quite performing the way i want it to you can just kick up that voltage just a little bit adjust it to taste and it can be a completely satisfying vape experience um, so something like that, absolutely. Um, I noticed they also carry Inokin products. Hopefully they have the MVP version two, which they do. Holy crap, it's only 49 euros. Jump on this. I've been recommending the iTaste MVP version two to a lot of people. Um, I feel like it's one of the best, most versatile variable wattage mods for the price around. It's easily, I mean, I took mine on my wedding and on my honeymoon to Jamaica and I loved it. I love using the iTaste MVP version too. It's very versatile. I was just dripping with it, but it comes with clearomizers. You can use cartomizers, cartomizer tank, clearomizers, iClear 30s. You can use a whole mess of stuff on there. So yes, check out cloud9vaping.co.uk and uh, shop around, see what you can see. If you have any more questions, obviously feel free to answer me. But that is the one viewer mail that I'm going to get to this week. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up because this has run way too long. I mean, just just way too long. And uh, I'm going to finish my brother Thelonious. I'm going to hang out with Amber and we're going to watch some television, which is kind of a new experience, watching television. Not sure what's coming up uh, next week. Uh, this week you probably watched the Neptune Hybrid video. I believe next week I'm going to do a video for a mech mod called The Lunar from Grand Vapor Station. I think that's what's uh, coming up next is The Lunar. I think The Lunar is next. And then, of course, next week in the vlog, um, as always, we'll be talking about beer, music, and vapor, and the FDA, which is, uh, like I said, going to be discussed in every vlog from now until 2016 and possibly beyond that. Uh, people are wondering about Toot Life shirts. I know they are. Um, soon. Ugh. So I got really sidetracked by this FDA stuff. I was going to make a huge order, and then this FDA thing happened, and I just stopped thinking about everything. I stopped thinking about VaporCon. I stopped thinking about T-shirts, and I was just focused like a freaking laser beam on this FDA stuff. And now that we're kind of moving forward, we have some guidance from CASA. Things are, you know, there's a plan in place a little bit. Um... VaporCon is on track, and hopefully in June, I will have Toot Life t-shirts. Um, just want to say that these are the greatest, most comfortable t-shirts of all time. And if you notice, my neck is uh, all nice and healed up now. It's not sore. I have full sort of range of motion. And uh, yes, it still looks freaking awesome because it's a Stormtrooper with uh, roses. And my buddy Mike asked me, what are the, well, what do the roses represent? And I said, well, it's just a traditional, you know, style tattoo. That's kind of the style, you know, of the traditional style of tattoos is flowers and roses and stuff like that. So I got a Stormtrooper with roses. And he's like, well, they should really mean something. And I said, well, each rose could represent uh, all the stormtroopers that were lost when both of the Death Stars were destroyed. So this represents the first Death Star, and because it's a little bit bigger, this one represents the second Death Star. So uh, one for me, and then one for my stormtroopers, and uh, now I'm rambling. But that's what I got. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. 
Thank you so much, uh, as always, for all the comments, music suggestions, beer suggestions. Uh, I just... uh, Makes a man feel good to have that sort of human connection with people that I that I truly, truly enjoy. Keep fighting the good fight against the FDA, and most importantly, everybody, I have this in my hand, I might as well vape it. Let's keep on vaping. <laughs>